We just believe we can help the city do better. I guess most most successful entrepreneurs are not waiting for it to come to them. for success and not waiting for progress. Once upon a time, a man got tired of hailing taxis in critical weather conditions, not getting a taxi, and in this case, spending $800 on a black cab service. He went ahead to invent an app called Uber that can help you locate a taxi that'll take you anywhere you want. Today, that app has grown into a multi-billion dollar company. One of the faces behind Uber is a billionaire himself, Travis Kalanick. Kalanick is many things, a billionaire, an entrepreneur, and the CEO of City Storage Systems, a cloud kitchen startup. As much as Kalanick tries to live a private life, he's still a billionaire and he has the lifestyle of one. Today, we're going to look at Travis Kalanick's net worth, lifestyle, and how he spends his millions. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and turn on post notifications so you never miss anything from this channel. Firstly, who is Travis Kalanick? Born on August 6, 1976, Kalanick grew up in Northridge, California. Kalanick grew up in the suburb of Los Angeles, and at a young age, he already had interest in computers and learned how to code by the time he was in middle school. He studied computer engineering and business economics at the University of California, Los Angeles, Angeles. While studying at UCLA, Kalanick was a member of the Theta Chi fraternity and started his first business, an online file exchange service called Scour. And in 1998, he dropped out of UCLA to work at the startup full-time. Scour was one of the first online companies to enable users to share movies and music online. Although its services became popular, the company was sued for copyright infringement by both the recording and motion picture industries. Scour eventually filed for bankruptcy in 2000 and later sold off all its assets. Although Kalanick's first startup didn't build his wealth, it gave him leverage and more opportunities. Up next, let's take a look at how he made his millions. After his startup company closed in 2000, Kalanick picked back up in 2001. He rebounded from the bankruptcy by founding Red Swoosh, another firm that specialized in file sharing technology. By the time he started his company, he was broke. He moved into his parents' house in 2001. He wasn't getting the ladies, and he owed the IRS $110,000 in unwithheld taxes. Red Swoosh won a number of prominent corporate clients, and Kalanick was able to sell the company in 2007 to Akami Technologies for nearly $19 million, but facilitated securities fraud with Kalanick by failing to pay all the shareholders. Things started to look better for Kalanick in 2009 when he partnered up with Garrett Camp to co-found Uber. From an initial operation that offered only three cars for hire, the company soon developed into a juggernaut, expanding to multiple overseas markets by 2012. Three years later, Uber operated in 66 countries and more than 360 cities worldwide. As the company expanded, Kalanick developed a reputation for being both aggressive and combative. Kalanick was CEO of Uber from 2009 to 2017, when he stepped down after five board of directors had demanded that he resign. Though he's no longer leading the global ride-hailing company, he remains wealthy. His net worth today is estimated to be $2.8 billion, which he made from Uber. He still owns about 55% of Uber's shares. Up next, these are the details of Kalanick's resignation. His problems began after he joined President Trump's team of business advisors. He faced a huge outcry, and he was forced to drop out weeks later. It was the first in a series of scandals in 2017. Soon, a video surfaced that showed Kalanick berating an Uber driver who was frustrated over the company's rates. But the bombshell landed in February 2017, when former Uber engineer Susan Fowler published a blog post accusing the company of rampant sexism. Kalanick announced that former Attorney General Eric Holder would investigate the allegations. But the hashtag delete Uber was becoming a frequent trending topic on social media. Weeks later, his mother was killed in a boat accident and he took a leave of absence. But the investors had had enough and they forced him to resign. He later released a statement saying, I love Uber more than anything in the world, and at this difficult moment in my personal life, I have accepted the investor's request to step aside so that Uber can go back to building rather than being distracted with another fight. Although he resigned as CEO, he remained a member of the board of directors. Next up, now that we know how he made his billions, let's talk about how he spends his billions. After leaving Uber, Kalanick sent himself on a nice vacation. He took a glamorous vacation in the wake of his departure from Uber. He sailed on a yacht owned by IAC chairman Barry Diller and fashion designer Diane von Furstenberg. He headed for Tahiti on the 7th million dollar sailing vessel with Anderson Cooper, Barry Diller, and many other famous guests. The boat is called Eos, and it is 305 feet long and can hold 16 guests and 21 crew members on board. His yacht trip to Tahiti wasn't the first of its kind for Kalanick. After selling Red Swoosh, he took his earnings and went to Spain, Japan, Greece, Iceland, Greenland, Hawaii, France, Australia, Portugal,
Portugal, Cape Verde, and Senegal. He literally visited every continent. Kalanick is a man who enjoys traveling and vacations, so he makes sure some of his money goes into that. Next up, the general public has never really understood why the 1% always go for penthouses. Well, Kalanick gave us something to talk about with his $36.5 million penthouse. The penthouse is on 565 Broom Street, Manhattan's Soho neighborhood, and at the time he bought it, it was the most expensive sale in New York City. Kalanick's four-bedroom, four-and-a-half bathroom space spans 6,734 square feet. The duplex is known as Penthouse North, and it also has an additional 3,400 square feet outdoors that include three terraces. The penthouse is one of two designed by Pritzker Prize-winning Italian architect Renzo Piano. The property has a private elevator that opens to living and dining spaces, and the kitchen has its custom cabinetry and top-of-the-line appliances. The master suite includes two walk-in closets, a 260-square-foot bathroom with a soaking tub, shower, and radiant heated floors. The rooftop space has a private pool and a summer kitchen. Kalanick's penthouse offers a panoramic view of the city skyline and the Hudson River. Up next, Kalanick has put most of his money into real estate, and I'm not talking about single-figure millions. He buys his properties in tens. He recently bought a $43.3 million estate in Los Angeles. His new property is known as the Bellagio Estate. It sprawls across 1.7 acres in the heart of Bel Air, one of the most coveted areas in Los Angeles. The 20,000-square-foot mansion was built in 1931, designed by celebrated architect Paul Williams, whose homes attracted stars including Frank Sinatra, Lucille Ball, and Cary Grant. The property was, however, renovated in 2019 by Don Zebel of Oz Architects and JRC Construction. The master suite is spread across more than 2,500 square feet. The house has a dual master bathroom and a spacious dressing room. The gourmet kitchen is outfitted with brass details and a skylight. It also has a massive wine cellar that can hold up to 7,000 bottles. The home has multiple common areas, many which have fireplaces, and other areas feature floor-to-ceiling windows to let in the California sunshine. The house also has a solarium, a wet bar with wood walls, and a fireplace. One dining and entertainment area opens up to the outdoors, and the estate has no shortage of outdoor space for enjoying the Southern California weather. There are two swimming pools on the property, as well as a guest house, and a fitness center overlooks one of the pools. The grounds also include a tennis court. Up next, as well as his properties in New York City and Los Angeles, Kalanick has since invested in expensive houses. He also has a home in San Francisco, which he purchased at a very high price. The San Francisco house is a townhouse in the upper hills of San Francisco's Castro neighborhood, which was nicknamed the Jam Pad. The house has its own Twitter account. Kalanick's San Francisco house was also the meeting location for a critical discussion on what Uber's future was going to look like. He always entertained visitors at the Jam Pad, mostly for business discussions. Visitors were welcome to crash on the couch, although they mostly played tennis until the early hours of the morning. Real estate is definitely the name of the game in Kalanick's post-Uber world. In March 2019, he purchased City Storage System, which redevelops underused industry, retail, and parking sites for $150 million. He then made himself CEO of the company. Next up, Kalanick isn't exactly a man who loves vehicles, so he doesn't have a car collection. And guess what? He doesn't have a driver's license. If he did, he probably wouldn't have paid $800 for a taxi ride. He does, however, own a car. Kalanick owns a 1999 BMW M3 convertible, but admits the alternator is broken and his driver's license has expired. For those unfamiliar, the BMW M3 represents the greatest lineage of sports sedans in history, so it isn't just any car or a cheap car. It benefits him, but Kalanick would rather sit behind a Toyota and let someone else do the driving. Up next, after he left Uber, he opened up another startup, Cloud Kitchens, which he raised $300 million to fund. It's known as a ghost kitchen. It's a purpose-built facility that is leased to restaurants to prepare food for delivery off-site from their full-service walk-in location. The ghost kitchen also offers virtual restaurants, those with no full-service location, to launch brands and offer delivery-only services. That's a wrap for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stick around for more exciting content on the channel.